And I would have made millions if it hadn't been for you meddling kids. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda, if it's your first time here. Welcome to my media entertainment channel. Yeah, so if you would like to come on social media, here's my Twitter and my Instagram. Go have fun, go enjoy, etc, etc, etc. And while you're here, you should watch one second, oh, please. My recent videos, I posted a video like a week ago talking about Hamilton, the extravaganza, and I ranked all the songs on there, which took a while, but I did it. For that, I posted a video woo, about the whole like YouTube thing that happened last week, um, talking about I told you so. And then before that, I posted a video talking about cancel culture in general. And yeah, the video is really interesting because no more. No more. I'm not talking about cancel culture. I'm talking about y'all. <laughs> no more. <laughs> End it. So, um, I was going to do my makeup and then I really thought about it and I said I don't want to. Also, I just took a practice test as in I, I literally just pressed submit on the practice test and then I turned the camera on. And so I'm going to be taking and I woke up at 6.30 this morning. So I'm going to be taking a nap. As soon as I finish this, I'm not putting makeup on. Aww. So do what you want with that information. It doesn't change anything. So nothing crazy, cause I have like, nothing crazy has warranted me to like sit down and like do anything. So I'm gonna be talking about, hmm, I've been thinking. I do a lot of thinking when there's nothing to talk about. Thinking of shifts. You know, mm, mm, I'm not giving them the title of cultural reset cause that would require something that actually is warranted by the audience, but shifts. And I'm thinking of the beauty community, right? Mm -hmm. So a couple of weeks ago now, I made a video talking about these companies are putting on the performance of a lifetime, something to that, I think that's the exact title. Something to that extent. I put that video up. Y'all should watch that one before or after this. It really doesn't matter. I'm gonna be saying some of the same points in this one because somehow it's gotten worse. Somehow it has gotten worse and the blame is placed on thee. The blame is placed on me for some, it, the blame is placed on the consumer. That's not the case. That's a, now I, now I have to get on here and tell you why that's not the case. Because y'all did this to yourself. It's called consequences of your action. And now you can reap the sorrow. So, oh, anyway, so this, I didn't, like the stamina, I didn't, wasn't expecting there to be any sort of stamina for, you know, caring about black people. Not, never. And a day in my life. Because where, have we ever seen a pattern of that bad behavior? Absolutely not. They didn't think this would go on for this long. And now it's showing your ass. And now, you know, Sorry, I can't sit still in a chair. So let's go back. We have to go back far. So if you weren't in the beauty community um, a while ago, I'm going to I'm going to tell you what happened. You don't have to look anything up. It's, it's, it's OK. So it all started with this damn list. It all started with the damn list. Yes, I'm blaming the list. Hmm. Walk with me. So if you don't know what this is, Anastasia Beverly Hills ABH, um, they basically hosted a virtual Hunger Games to get on their PR list, which is like where they send you new releases ahead of time and stuff like that. And when I say virtual Hunger Games, I'm re I'm a dramatic person. I'm not being dramatic when I say virtual Hunger Games because people were tripping, colliding, stumbling, over themselves to get on this list. Let me, myself included, I'm not gonna, please, please. It was ABH at the time, huh, which is different than what it is right now, but it was ABH at the time, this was a year ago, like March-ish of last year. So with this creation of a war, a war was created to get on this list, right? So ABH marketed themselves, it all, it all fits. Marketed themselves as the only brand to think of the small creator. The only brand to give the small creator their flowers. Norvina specifically herself became or donned herself, remember what I said here, as the Mother Teresa for the small creators. The Mother Teresa, the other saving grace, the extending of the olive branch to the olive olive branch to the small creators and it was intended i'm getting there within this they spoke 
pretty highly of themselves because they're like oh we're not focused on numbers we don't care about engagement all of that we just care about you and your talent because what smaller creators have been saying for a long time is if you just stop caring about the numbers and start looking about actual talent you will get um more unproblematic creators in the in the words of the small creators because PR lists in the past and now are business arrangements. You need to send them with people with big followings in hopes that they'll talk about the products and then send all their fans to go buy your products, right? How the ABH PR list differed slightly. Slightly, when I say slightly, I mean ever so. It was the same goal, but the path they took to get to that goal was very, very different. So this ABH PR list and search you really it's both the search was an instrumental part in this they banked on the fact that these i forget if it was hundreds of people they added or it got into the thousands i'm pretty sure it was the hundred because a thousands is a lot but i could be wrong they banked on the fact these people specifically that they were adding were either a never on a PR list in their life or if they were on one it wasn't more than two. So you're on now a major, a humongous because also ABH at this time was at the peak of their career. Damn. What are you go what are you going to use but that brand? You're on max two PR lists. So you finally because getting on a PR list is like a bucket goal bucket list thing from a lot of um, beauty creators so now you're on this PR list and now what are you gonna do you're gonna use their products the day you die to the day you die and what does that do for the brand free promotion and before whatever what I want to call it corporation hive LIC hive LI, I don't care before they come yes it costs money to send out PR packages but compared to the amount of money that it would have taken to procure, procure campaigns to get the same amount of promotion it's it's, it's chump change it's pennies. It's, it's 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 nothing. It doesn't it doesn't make that big of a difference at all at all. It's compared to what it would have cost for them to put out proper campaigns to get the same the same amount of outreach is different, right? So this idea, because if you go back to what I said about Norvina in the in the first place, this idea was the start of the shift of the humanization of beauty brands. Whoa, whoa! Didn't think I was going there. I am. Mm -hmm. So ABH is the only brand that cares about us as creators. ABH is the only brand that wants to see us succeed. So much so this brand had stands. Not people who just really liked their products. I'm talking about accounts made to stand ABH. Accounts made to stand Norvina. Yep all of that I'm not saying there's an issue i'm just po providing you with facts for my point right so aba did this first other brands because they all follow each other at this point other brands started to fall out suit tangent it worked out best for abh i think because they were the they were the first to do it that's why it worked out the best for them but i mean look at us now didn't work out that great but at the time it worked out the best for ABH because they were the first to do it and do it successfully, right? So other brands started doing PR searches, PR giveaways. What happened to the what happened to your PR team or representative? Now all of a sudden nobody wants to do the work to go out and see talent or look for talent. Now it's time for creators to drop everything that they're doing and beg for crumbs of attention from their favorite brands. It's weirdo behavior. PR searches, PR, anything of that sort is they got more than they gave. <laughs> like they got more than they gave to you. They got, do you know how many people either already own ABH products and use them finally, or went out and purchased them for any brand. Go out and purchase products so you get a chance of getting on the PR list. Now you're only using that brand stuff. They won. They won. There you were you were involved in a game. You were, didn't know you were in the game. You were a pawn in the game and you had no idea you were a part of it. That's what's crazy. That is manipulation. Manipulation. Cuz who would know better? 
No one knows. Are you? No one is in cahoots with the law. No one knows what's going on at company. Manipulation. Fame. Money. Manipulation. So. So now from this we get the humanization of the beauty brand. And this is where we enter, I think, the most recent shift in the beauty community. A shift happens every year because people get bored because it's makeup, right? You can't have the same thing for too often. Who, who, where will the drama be? Where will the scandal be? Nowhere. So that's, we have to shift every, we have to shift every year, right? Previously, beauty re brands were revered. Brands like ABH, all those brands like that. I'm just using them as an example because they were one of the big cause of this. So they were revered. There was the brand trips, the exclusive getaways, the tropical islands, the exclusive parties. It was an event. It was an event. If you were known by this brand, it was like, wow, you're on that PR list? Damn, that's crazy. It was an event when a palette dropped. You don't have this palette, loser. Loser, you don't have it, loser. The art PR list was used by some, not by all, as a way to kind of measure talent. It was like, this is the cool kids table, you can't sit with us. Like if you weren't on the PR list, it was like, loser. It was a level, it was a level to measure talent, which it shouldn't have been, come on, girl. <laughs> no comment. But it was in that sense and it was like, oh, you're on the PR list. Now you're besties with Norvina. Now you're besties with her. Now she knows who you are. Now she likes you and your talent. You are besties with the owner of or co-owner or something of a multi-million dollar co corporation. Yes, you're certainly friends with her. You sure are. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. You keep dreaming. You love to dream. Loser behavior, right? However, once Norvina and other brands um, started getting more visible brand owners, I made a video on that. It's called, let's talk about the consequences of being a visible brand owner. <laughs> I think that's the exact title. Look at me today. So by taking on a much more visible role in that company, the consequences held henceforth came. They came and they conquered and they, con they made it bad. Because what happened? Cheapen the whole brand, girl. I don't know what you want me to tell you. And someone's going to say I'm rude by saying that, but I need you to look at the evidence. I need you to look at the evidence. All right. So brands started to follow suit from this because they're like, oh my God, it worked with ABH. Why wouldn't it work for us, right? We had brand owners trying to kiki and laugh with people on the timeline that they don't own a multi-million dollar corporation. Massive PR hurdles instead of work being done themselves. Brands started to take on personas. Corporations started to take on personas, becoming self-aware of stuff that they know annoys people color pop. It's not funny if the joke comes from you because you can stop releasing products like crazy. What you guys did which is great, but that still all happened, right? Social media is now about memes, it's not products. Not product descriptions, not how they work, it's how the company made, the company made me laugh, I, I laughed. That's why I bought the product. Not because I saw a makeup artist use it or like an influencer use it, I mean, kind of, and I liked the way it looked. No, it was like, that was funny. Which works for some brands. It works for some brands like Fenty Beauty, they do it well. Um, for other brands, you know, it's a little very try hard. Very trying to get it in at the popular girl's table and you need to be eating lunch in the bathroom. Try hard. Like, it's get, it's weird. It's know your place. Uh, I don't want to sound like a bully, but maybe move somewhere else. Okay, and of course, the classics, the brands that have a leg to stand on don't do this stuff. Have you noticed brands that don't resort to gimmicks don't don't play with the children. They don't play with the children or the 40 year old wannabes. There's a little too, those are only brands that do this stuff. Children or go, they're, 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 it's declining. It's declining so rapidly they need to resort to outlandish gimmick. Cause gimmicks aren't always bad. I don't care. I love a good gimmick. Good keyword there. Hmm. Hmm. And here's the thing that made me when I was doing this, I was like, this is very interesting. I don't see that many influencer-run brands doing this ridiculousness. Like, um, with influencer collabs, 
they do this ridiculousness. Oh my God, because now it's like, well, if you support this person, you would spend the $40 and buy this palette, right? Don't you like them? Don't you support them? What are you, do if you don't buy, you don't like them truly, if you don't buy the palette, right? That's with influencer brands, with collapse. Influencer brands that I follow, they don't emphasize the fact that the owner is an influencer. We're talking about my, it like that, what that'll do is it'll limit who can buy and who will want to buy your product because no, not a lot of people like you guys. Ooh, ooh, not a lot. So it's a good thing to like kind of not make yourself just create your brand and be like, mm, yeah, I own it, but I don't own it. I'm not in your face about it. That's something that was good, right? So whatever. Brands humanize themselves and it works. I mean, people fall for it every time. It's the reason why when brands do something shady, they'll bring up like the sob story of their brand owner. And I'm like, but what, ha what happened? Are you gonna address this? No, it's, I started this brand with a pack of gum in my pocket and five cents. That's not what we're talking about right now, but that's why they bring it up. It's because it makes you feel, oh, this corporation's a person, oh, no, no, no. But it worked, guys, like, but they did this. They all followed suit. They all followed ABH's little path. You are your brand now. You chose to do that, right? So here's the issue that I guess nobody thought about previously. Mm -hmm. The consequences, baby girl. We're at the point, we're at the point right now of the consequences of humanizing your brand and it's so delicious to see. So first, we have with ABH, that just was messy, messy, messy boots. It was like, cause Norvina made herself the face of the brand and then she tried, you know, she was trying to become the all Hail Mary of small influencers, you know, the instant influencer as a PR stunt, no comment, no comment. But that kind of backfired when a bunch of employees were like, yeah, she's a terrible person. And people were like, yeah, that's crazy. Oof, oof. And then, you know, when you are the brand owner and you send this racist behemoth of, of Supreme Louis Vuitton bag, are we serious? Are, okay, so it's ugly. It's Supreme, so it's ugly. And it costs a $25,000 a racist you did that to yourself i don't know what you want me to tell you i don't know how you want me to help and now you're releasing fish scented liners karma people have said they smell fish market that's not me i didn't do that to you so it looks like something came back to bite it looks like something came back to bite and of course when you're trying to release a brand within a brand and what sells pretty face human i'm person i'm your fr i'm your friend i'm your friend buy from me <laughs> buy from me that's what works right and then when a brand came from it it was like oh huh i have to she's my friend so i have to buy that stuff right hmm. yeah right i also personally think the norvina brand was designed for the budding is budding the right word for the want for the people who want to be beauty influencers because the kind of stuff that they made was really not for the everyday person like how abh was which is what made it so different which is what made it appeal to a lot of people who at the time were still trying to get on the abh pr list and when she started launching like the 75 palettes at a time and they were super colorful and they were super big it was like everyone forgot that you know you already own all those colors from the rainbow gate of 2018 with all the rainbow palettes that came out everyone kind of forgot because it was like now well my friend is releasing these palettes i have these colors my it's my friend she cares about me as a soul creator so i'm gonna buy them they're $60 each. I'm gonna buy them so I can review them so I can get on the EV tour list, per, per. No, that's what happened though. Y'all made it like this. Y'all made it fun. It was fun and giggles before when you were getting your money, right? It was fun and giggles before. But now when it's time to do something that I don't know actually matters, now, it's about the makeup, I'm sorry. Now it's about the business. Now it's about, we can't take too much of a stand on anything on, on, on Black Lives Matter because it's about the business. We can't take a stand against racism because it's about the makeup.
that has nothing to do with makeup even nothing we don't make products for you anyway so I don't know why you're talking about look at the look at the Venn diagram between brands who make products for me and brands who are saying stuff like that it's a it's a circle it's not two it's one circle right so what happened to the original plot I thought you wanted to be my friend I thought you wanted to be my friend and hold my hand that's what I thought was going on but apparently I, mean, I wasn't wrong but we were wrong you're not my friend my friend would care about me thought you wanted to be my friend right no they expected this all to blow over and that's what's really um not funny but really just like y'all suck and you make bad products have you looked at trend mood recently Ugh. oh my god it's nothing but disappointment it's nothing but sadness like i'm sad why are why what they're trying to sell people not people i would i'm not including myself in that conversation they're trying to sell people madness for 45 dollars no whatever so they thought this was going to be a two-week ordeal and then it was a fortnight ordeal and then it was getting back to regular scheduled programming and yeah like that's happened every other time before but now people are remaining you know glued they said what's up they, are you gonna do what you said or not no so now it's causing actual change i would guess and it's a question of like yeah why do people care so much about brands that have shown that's like why do you why are you like pressing them about it and it's like well i mean even though i haven't done a look in like months i haven't posted a, i've done looks i haven't posted a look in like months so whatever if a brand stinks they stink and they need to know that they stink they need to know they stink and they need to know the odor is pungent and that we don't like them and that they have to do some actual work if they ever want to get business back again this is why i said this in my other video now it's tag your favorite black creator what happens to the pr person is that who does this why are people doing the work for you do you not have a social media person you know on instagram i don't use it but i know how it works on instagram there's a little button where you go to your tagged photos maybe that's where you can find black creators huh hmm hmm maybe you don't need to be asking the mass audiences of the world tag your favorite black creator who uses our products maybe you can go to the tagged photos why won't you scroll until you find a black person? It, it's, oh. I see that it's nonsense. It's always been, that's why I had to get on here and do this again. Cause it's not, and I'm like, it's been a couple of weeks so you can see who's reverted back and they've all reverted back to what they were doing before. I see your nonsense. Now you're posting black creators, but it's only on Twitter. Even though the money for like beauty stuff comes from Instagram, you're only posting them on Twitter and on Twitter you're not tagging them you're just posting a picture I mean like this is so cute star emoji next caller where is the post on Instagram with the tag nowhere what are you trying to say that's what I'm like you tag everybody else you tag at color pop you tag everybody else what's going on now What's going on now? I see you, po it's really, you know, that really made me mad. Cause they were posted like three black girls in a row and I turned into Scooby-Doo trying to find out who these people were. And I said, where is the tag? It takes three seconds, six maybe, if you can't type that fast to tag someone. It makes, this is, this is what, so we're in, we did the humanization phase, you know, instant influencer was supposed to be a PR stunt but there was so much mess going on with that company it didn't really work but so we were we did the humanization part now we're in the damage control part right you humanize yourself we did that people ate it up now it's backfiring but it's too late you can't like just put the wizard behind the curtain again you can't just like stop and be like stop looking at us as your friends anymore because you chose to do that yourself you can't do that now we're in damage control because of the magnitude of the movement, now you're deciding to listen to black people or you're deciding to listen to the white people regurgitating what we say. I don't know which one it is. Both are bad. Um, so now the racists of the community are finally being taken to the landfill and now it's damage control. And this is why I made this video because um, Morphe, we, we have some things to talk about. 
Now you've discovered racism. Now you have discovered that Jizzle Suck Serpent is a bad person. You cannot be serious. What happened to the shrines to him in your store? If you guys, I don't know if you've been to a Morphe store. I've been to one Mor Morphe store. There is a literal shrine to him. It's weird. I'm like, you didn't build a shrine. There's no shrine like this to Jacqueline. Kind of major company. What did it, whatever. All this stuff has come out on this about this man. But here's my thing if you don't understand. I think it was 2018 when all the racist stuff about him came out the first time. The first time. So this, is, this has happened before. This has happened before and they kept him in their stores and then it, it, it proceeded to do collab after collab too with him. So please, y'all can save, y'all can save me. We're now cutting ties with Jeffree Star because we discovered what racism is. It makes no sense to me. It's very suspect. That's the word I was like, we're very suspect. It's not like more, it's not, it's not like Morphe has a history of collaborating with the entire racist coalition in the past. It's not like that. Not like they've collabed with almost every single someone who said something kind of anti-black in the world. Why you've collaborated with all of them? Hmm. Hmm. And then Maddie Ziegler, just, just like she didn't deserve to get caught up in this. She just wanted to do, release her palette and little cream blushes and go. Bless her heart. She doesn't deserve you guys, please. Oh my God. Now people are demanding the brands to put their products where their mouths are. And I'm like, it's not gonna stop. So you might as well just buckle in for the ride. If we're getting rid of one demon, all of them are gonna go. You did this, you wanted us to like you. You wanted us to buy your products that are not very good, so you put an influencer name on it because they're not very good. So I think I forgot to mention this, um, but if you wanted a relation to how Morphe, via the humanization of brands, so Morphe's whole thing from the start was like, we're the stuff the cool kids use. It's why they did the whole influencer code thing. They came up with the rise of influencer marketing. And it was like, well, look at these popular Look at these popular kids. They're using our products. If you want to be like them, if you want to be like these people, you got to buy our products, fool. And then they, you know, did every, and they collab with an influencer every day under the sun. There was that whole set, I think it was 2018, when there was like a new influencer collab coming out every other day. Maybe that was 2018, late 2018, but I made a video on influencer collabs, I think. Yeah, I made a video on that. So if you want to know more about that, go watch that. But that's what it, Morphe is related to the humanization thing. They've always kind of been like that. Even though the actual brand owner herself hasn't become super visible, she's done it, the company has done it in other ways. It doesn't always have to be exactly who the brand owner is. Cause I mean like Norvina's not the brand owner of ABH anyways. So yeah. I just saw, um, I think it's a beauty lish that sounds like an aquatic species but i think it's a beauty lish say they're going to keep jeffree star cosmetics because they like believe he's changed or whatever you're keeping it because morphe was his biggest distributor i think and now you want to be the next biggest distributor just just because this will blow over in like maybe two months maybe three if we can haul three but like of course, you can't say that, but like we all know that's why you're doing it. Please stop playing. I'm not stupid. I don't like my intelligence being questioned. I'm really not stupid. It's like it's good, like at the cost of racism. Okay, sure. Also, I feel I just might be. I'm not wrong. Morphe has excused his behaviors previously in the past. In the past, they have said some. Someone brought it to their attention. Why are you collaborating? And they've excused it before. Hmm. Here's an Advil. After we sliced your foot off with a sword. Here's a band-aid to answer for our war crimes against humanity. Here you go. Stop. Stop. Stop saying all this stuff. Here you go. Don't you want a band-aid? Y'all collab with him twice. Twice. You were happy to sell his collab with Sweat Stain. In fact, you were ec ecstatic, ecstatic to do so. You took off drenched piss stuff immediately, but 
you to think about it for a week with Baltimore. See, that's why I'm like, either way you look at any of this, it's all bad. Because they took off sweat stain stuff literally immediately, but there was like a week gap or a week and a half gap between them getting rid of this man stuff too. So they were getting exposed at the exact same time. Why did you need a week to ponder with your thoughts? Either way, it's bad. Either way, no matter every angle you approach it, it's bad. It's all bad. It's all bad. I need, I said this in the We Told You So video, maybe. I need you guys to think about why no brand wants to touch Jeffree Star. Why do you think he made his own company? He said, I don't want to be in Sephora. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. The only way you got into an Ulta was through this place. So, who selling, ooh, plastic palette, ooh, dog hair brushes, ooh, no, you're lying to yourself. The only other brand that touched him, Benefit put him on a travel size something and then pulled it when people started talking smack, pulled it immediately. They said, um, we don't want this, even though Benefit no comment. They pull, who was the only brand that would touch him? Morphe. Terrorism. Constant terrorism. Against me, myself, and I. And like people, and by people I mean lunatics, are now like denouncing Morphe now they've cut ties with him. Tangent, I don't believe they've cut shit for shit. I'm sure they're probably gonna like sell all the stock that they have now. I'm sure. I think someone said that his stuff is still on Morphe's website, so they're just gonna sell all his stock now and then be like, oh, we won't put it back up, but like maybe will in like a year. And so these, back to the lunatics. The lunatics are saying, they're now um, the racist lunatics, are saying that they're not gonna support Morphe anymore because Jeffree Star was the only reason anyone went to Morphe. Revisionist. <laughs> Jeffree Star made Morphe? They released a brush collaboration with him. I'm sorry, I'm not harping on brush collaborations. I'm just saying in terms of the quality of scale of collaborations, brush is above like, um, what, fan. Brush is above, what, socks. It's not very high. Especially if you just dye them pink and up the price like five, ten dollars. It's not the quality. You didn't. It's not. You didn't get a. You, nothing happened. Whatever. And it's like no. That's crazy. And it's interesting. Also, last part. It's interesting to me how this only happened after several viral tweets from influencers, specifically white ones. Yes, everything's about race went out denouncing your brand and your affiliation with Jeffree Star. Now all of a sudden, Lululemon streets are saying we won't, we, we will not buy your dog haired brushes anymore unless you denounce him. Now it's time for damage control. Shoot guys, guys, we got away with it for this long because of those damn kids. We have to re remove our stock with Jeffree Star, which they didn't. They did. No way. I call shenanigans. Simply, simply put, I call shenanigans because it just did, didn't happen. Do I believe they, they're gonna sell their stock, their whatever's left in there. Um, they got rid, they cut all ties, sure. If you cut all ties, the company would go belly up. But that's my opinion. Now it's time to do damage control. What you gonna do? gonna post all black creators for one week on Instagram even though he would have called them all in a heartbeat is that what's gonna happen what's gonna happen? are you gonna revisit that foundation and launch non green shades is that what's gonna happen oh no people already took their codes away from you so you're done codes are gone people started pulling codes left and right and I said you know what Companies built on nothing will fall. It's beautiful. I mean, they're not go I mean, people buy from this again because of this. So like, I don't really know if what I'm saying holds any validity, but yeah.
groups that inflict violence will fall. Mm, that's it. That's it. This was so, this is a complete rant. So, and yeah, I didn't put any makeup on because I decided not to put makeup on for things I don't want to give too much of my time to. And I don't want to give too much of my time to Morphe. I've already made like a video on Morphe before. It's, it's constant. It's constant hatred towards me as an individual. Do you not feel hatred? I own a lot of Morphe brushes and I'm like, I feel like this is screaming a slur at me when I say it and I need to stop. So I ordered new brushes. <laughs> Eek. So yeah, that's it. That's the end of my video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, yeah. So yeah, if you like all my social media, here's my Twitter and my Instagram. Go have fun. Enjoy. There's an ice cream truck that comes through here every time. No one's in this new, no, we don't want ice cream. Especially during Corona. No, we don't want ice cream from you. Anyway, if you like on social media, here's my Twitter and my Instagram. Go have fun, go enjoy. And while you're here, check out some of my recent videos that are on your screen now. They're probably more coherent than this one. Yeah, I should not film videos after taking a practice test. You live and you learn. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're staying healthy and safe as safe as you can and yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye